Thank you for tuning in. This is Justin and Joel from Knock On Wood Custom. Today we're looking at crafting the Cedar River Table. Hope you guys enjoy. It all starts with picking the right slab for your project. For us, we chose a book match pair of cedar slabs that we've had dried and in our shop for a while now. Joel and I crafted this router sled. This is probably version number three, um, but this is our favorite so far. We're about to build another one. But this router sled allows us to flatten wood slabs that are much larger than a normal planer would allow us to do. Oh, I love this view. So Joel is now going to set up the depth that he needs for his router. He can move the router down. Since we've already done a single pass, he's probably going to move it down about an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter if your router is strong enough. We use currently a Triton router that's a three and a quarter horsepower. It allows us to flat material pretty easily. We use hardwoods like uh, black walnut, and it doesn't have a problem working through those with a reasonably sized bit. Taking a moment to look at protection gear, you can see that Joel's wearing a respirator and eye pro. When using a router sled, we highly suggest this, as well as any other time you're doing woodworking. But in this case, the router sled puts off a lot of dust and a lot of shavings. Always protect your lungs, and everything else while you're in your shop. In previous videos, we've looked at our Arbor Tech. With its inserts, it's able to easily shape through wood. In this case, Joel has both of the wood slabs with each other just the way they were stacked when they were cut and he wants to make sure that the ends mirror each other or at least are shaped similarly. The nice part about the Arbor Tech is the carbide inserts are replaceable. So this isn't something that you just have and you have to waste it. You can actually replace these and continue to use it. It is amazing for shaping wood. Uh, I can see a lot of positives to it. We leave this one on this angle grinder specifically. We use other angle grinders anytime we want to do sanding. That way you don't have to take off the harness and the safety gear that comes with this. Now that both ends are round, let's see how we can use the Arbor Tech otherwise. In this case with cedar, oftentimes we see a lot of offshoots and branches which gives it its beautiful character. We want to go ahead and shape this up, and it's not always easy to do. With the Arbor Tech, it just tears right through it.
Unless our project is getting finished in epoxy, we like to sculpt our live edge. By doing this, it allows us to show the natural contours of such an organic medium. If you want, you can leave your live edge with, uh, it's sculpted in any way. If you've ever seen chiseled stone, you have that natural edge that's kind of chipped away. You can achieve that with the Arbor Tech. Some people don't like it, and that's 100% okay. The good news is it's just there to remove rough stock. So if you want to take it a step further and do some more finishing, look to find your angle grinder with an 80 or a 120 and you can start to smooth everything out. Now that we're done sculpting the live edge, we're going to go back over the entire piece with an orbital sander. Basically, this allows us to smooth out any of those details and clean up any of the lines that may have been left by the router spell. Anytime that we craft Live Edge, we like to make sure that there's no sharp edges left. A lot of times these slabs with the live edge will have a nice sharp point on one end. So we like to use our orbital sander to kind of sand down uh, almost like what a router would do with a, a round over bit. But it just gives us a little bit of a nice cleaner profile. It also helps maintain that edge so you don't have future cracking. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. We truly appreciate you. We love learning and sharing what we learned. Be sure to subscribe and share. Stay tuned for part number two.